I'm back at it again. I finally got my connectors in so I can go ahead and rewire the engine and TCU and hopefully when things are done it'll be better. But I'll show you what I've done so far. The factory fuse block, relay block. And this is what it was originally. I don't remember what this is controlling. This is still the fuel pump. This I took out and replaced it with this style relay. The other one was a five pin. It, it did, you know, one, two, three, it's six pin. Did weird stuff. Don't need that. This is controlling the fan. And engine continuous power. I rewired it. Shift lock rewired. Front fog lights rewired. Horns rewired. All so that I can separate my injectors and coil powers because they can be battery hot but the ECU and TCU they need ignition power and I had everything shared before with this cluster of small wires and factory garbage but all the wires that were in here were small but I had an entire Nissan hard body harness and its wires were this big so all I had to do was pop out these wires, uh, pop the factory ones out of the 240, and just plug and play. Nice and simple, so now I can run a much bigger, a much larger fuse without, without possibly frying anything, because it's supplied with big wires. I'm hoping that'll eliminate some crosstalk or voltage drop. My transmission did some weird stuff. And so while I'm doing the bulkheads, let's see. This is the one from inside the fender well. All my powers from the fuse block will go through here with a Deutsch connector. And the bulkheads will be here and here for the engine and transmission. I also had, this is the wideband in the computer. It's also a battery hot. The computer grounds it to kick it on. I had it tied into all the same wires too, and now it has its own. So I'm hoping after all this everything will be better and, and no weird voltage drop. Maybe the transmission controller will stop doing weird stuff and all in all just be better. These are the Deutsch bulkhead connectors I got. They're 47 pin. This will go through the firewall from the other side and it's got a plastic, plastic nut to lock it in. I'll have to open up the hole in the firewall just a little bit. It's a little small right now. They're not too complicated. You just click together like that. You got all these different size pins. Well, there's only two sizes in this. This is a 47 pin. Let's see. There's only five of the larger holes. So five of these type pins and all the rest are these, much smaller, different gauge wire. And these are the crimpers you use. Let's see. It just crimps all four sides at once. These are not cheap. I'd borrow these from work, but they're adjustable and you just adjust the height of this changes how deep where it where it's gonna crimp at on the pin. You adjust that, changes where it pinches it at, because different ones will sit at different heights. But they work good. They sell them that you can use like a weather pack style. I don't have one here to show you. The weather pack style, they work and they are cheaper than these are. These are considered solid. But it's the ones where you gotta, it bends them over the wire. And they always distort a little bit. And when you have this many wires going through here, it's a pain in the butt to get them in and seated properly. And they'll all be pointed a little off. And uh, from my experience with them, they're not worth messing with. This is this is the way to go. You crimp these, they stay straight. I've already got a couple of these pulled out or cut. They're all going to end up cut at this exact length. But there's a lot of wires, so I don't want to get lost. So these ones are going to... They're going to hots and I think these are all powers. One, this one goes to the dash for coolant temp. But I'm going to put ends on all these and put them in a the connector. And then I will cut one of these or cut each of these one at a time so I don't get lost 
put an end on each one, put one in the female end, one in the male end, and hopefully I don't mess up. These really aren't that hard to use. It's pretty self-explanatory. That's what it looks like. Come on, focus. Yeah. Then you adjust where this crimp's at by adjusting this. And the male to female, that changes. But I'm going to do this uh, about a bajillion more times. I'm not going to record that because it's going to look just like that. Times 50. Well, I got this one done. I got lucky. I had to use every single pin. Yeah, and the factory sleeve fits right over top of it. It's pretty tight, so I'm happy about that. It'll just go right there. A little more wiggle room. There we go. It'll be tight. I might move this filter. It's supposed to be down here further, and I may move it down there just so that that has more room to move. I've got this end done, too. I've still got to add one wire for the starter. And then I'll have to put another connector on these because this end will come through this hole to go to all my ignition hots and battery hots and, and triggers and stuff. But I'll get this in and I'll go from there. There it is in the firewall. If I get this in one shot, that lines up and this just twists and click. And I've got room. I'm close to things, but I've got room. I probably could have made this a little shorter, but it'll be fine. Yeah, I'll throw a zip tie around that or something. It's got room to wiggle so it doesn't tear itself apart. That'll work. Well, I got the transmission one done, and I've got this just taped up. I'll loom it later. I still got to make an adapter so that this fits properly. But that's on. Transmission is in. I uh, accidentally cut the wideband harness a little too short, so I'm either going to rob it off my supercharged Dakota, or I'll just order another one and put it in later. So, engine, transmission, the wideband will go through here separate, along with all my ignition hots, battery hots, relay triggers that go to the ECU. Transmission controller is mounted. I need to get a plug for that hole. Because it'd be, be great shooting water right into the connectors. But I need a plug for that hole. Loom all this stuff up. That'll be there. All fairly simple stuff. There's the wide band. Unfortunately, I forgot what this wire does, so I gotta go in the I gotta go in the software and look at the analog outs and see what I forgot. I still got to get a little box to put this in. And these are all the, the paddle shifting and mode selection overdrive on off wires. And I got to mount this, which I think I'll make a bracket. And this will sit right here. It looks pretty rough with all the wires just open, but I think it'll look alright. It's fairly tucked away. Your feet aren't going to get into it when it's all mounted. But... That's that. I, I haven't got to start this thing and it's made me nervous, all this stuff that I've done. So this is a, let's see what happens. So we got lights on on the transmission controller. Fuel pump prime. It still runs! Hell yeah! Oh! Well, shit. <laughs> Still runs ish. Huh. What did I do?
there wasn't really anything wrong with it. Right before I parked it, I started playing with re or rescaling the fuel table. And right here was just so lean, it was falling on its face. It's still doing it a little bit, but... Much better. Without the wide bend, I can't see what it's doing, but I just gave it a bunch of fuel and it liked it, so it was just lean. It's all wired and mounted. I put the ECU up there. It only has that one bolt holding it up, but that should work just fine. All my bulkheads. This goes to the dash. Like this was a coolant temp intact. I've still got to put this in something. I'm just going to wrap it in tape so it can't short out for now. These are all the inputs for shifting. I'll, I'll do something with that too. But I'm at the point that I can put it back on the ground. And uh, I also wired the white band back in. I took the one out of my Dakota. So I wasn't too short. And it's wired back in too. So I'll have full functionality. But at this point I can take it. Go down the road. And see if it still does that weird stuff. I finally figured it out. The rewiring helped. But it didn't actually fix the problem with the transmission. But I did finally figure out what it was. On here, if you can see the solenoids in park and neutral, it fires two solenoids, which would be kind of like putting the trans brake on, I believe, or it'd bind the transmission up. But it's somewhere near neutral and park, so it doesn't matter. But with this gear selector, and I had it wired up per, per their instructions, but you can see as this moves, and, and I finally figured out what to do right here, see that's reverse that's the signal for reverse that's neutral right this is how I fixed it I made drive no signal at all because the signal was so close to neutral that going down the road it would do like this just a little bit and vary so it would think it was a neutral with it in drive and it would apply those two solenoids and just lock the transmission up because this is just wiggling the shifter just that little bit in the Prindle switch, in the Prindle switch on the transmission. So it'd go down the road, and that would move enough for it to think it was a neutral, and apply two solenoids at once. Or like, a, let's see, it would apply channel one and channel three, which is first gear and fourth gear at the same time, and it'd just lock it right up. And I had moved it so that new, or so the drive was higher up it was actually lower it was closer to here it was about right here and as I'd go down the road instead of it locking it up it would think it wasn't second every now and again and it downshift which was less of a problem but to finally fix it I made it so that drive is nothing so it can't fluctuate there's no moving it can't mistake that for anything and that has fixed it no more problems so now I've been keeping my hand on the shifter the whole time just in case it does it because it, it's it's done it in some corners before and it becomes a handful. But I finally got it whooped. So now I can now I can really start working on this thing and get it tuned in right and just really enjoy it. That's a wrap for this video. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.